I think we're all experiencing the holiday slowdown. Excuse my eyes, I'm trying to repair my vision through um, eye exercises and castor oil and um, pearl powder. So I slept in castor oil and pearl powder and now my eyes are bloodshot. Uh, but it's, it's Saturday, it's the third day in a row where I'm not prospecting. And I think a lot of us are feeling the effects of, I'm trying to get Mango down from there. I'm trying to get him to fly down from there. <laughs> and he's, he just wants to chill up there or he's scared, I don't know. I think a lot of us are getting, you know, feeling the effects of the holiday season. And in this video, I wanna talk about it, show you what you can do to get deals now and kind of help you change your mindset if you're experiencing the slowdown, because I understand this could be very discouraging for uh, a lot of you who aren't like prepared for this. But right now, um, it's Saturday. It's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Aside from the trip to Korea, this is like the third day where I've actually just done nothing. It's kind of nice, actually. <laughs> it's kind of nice to do nothing. But a part of me feels like a piece of shit because I know I should be working my ass off so I can achieve what I'm trying to achieve. I just recently got this uh, sauna. It's a steam sauna and I just step outside. I I've, been, I've been using it every day. It's great to ha just have it and not have to share a sauna with um, with others. All right, it's been like 40 minutes. Mango's just been on that door, so I'm just gonna go get him down. Hey. <laughs> He's been waiting for that. Why didn't you do that on your own? Huh? Why didn't you do that on your own? <laughs> I look blazed. I don't want to put in red eye drops because they're not good for you. But the problem is, the problem is that my car has no license plate <laughs> and my back window is so tinted that the police might not be able to see the temporary plates. So if I get pulled over and my eyes look like this, I think there's um, going to be some potential issues. All right, so let's talk now about the holiday season. If you're new to the seasonality of this business, welcome. Just, I mean, in general... Thanks, the Thanksgiving and Christmas New Year's stretch is the slowest market of the season, at least where I'm from. And the only people wanting to make a move are the ones that need to. Take a look at the new whip. I just got the uh, the 350 launch edition. I'm not, no, no, I just got the uh, 500 launch edition. When I bought my car, I got the 350 with the like the custom interior. I flew down to California to get it. But then after I bought the 350, I <laughs> I realized 500s exist. So I immediately got pissed. Listen to this. I had the 350 for about 18 months. I actually got the 350 because I gave my parents my old car because my dad totaled his. And I loved the 350 so much. It looked great. It was so reliable. I love the reliability of Toyotas. So that's a huge reason why I stayed with Lexus. Oh shoot, I forgot my pre-workout. Let me go back. Actually, while I'm here, let me give you a walk around of the car. But this car's sick. Um, the launch edition comes with suede seats. It's got that suede armrest here that I don't know what it's called. It also has this, which is great. The launch, there's only 500 launch editions uh, ever produced. Anyway, if you're prospecting, if you're a prospecting agent and you are experiencing the, all your leads saying, I'm gonna wait until springtime. I'm gonna wait until after the holidays. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. Um, if you're an agent, we're probably getting that kind of resistance. Which is normal, you know, if I was a seller, I would be waiting until springtime. I don't want to sell during Thanksgiving and Christmas. I don't want to do that at all unless I want to take like a lesser amount of money. So realistically, the only people that are moving right now are the people that need to. And unless you're like actively outbound prospecting, you're probably not going to find these people. The important thing to note during a drought like this or like a slow season like this is that they these these people that are wanting to make a move they will move it's just you gotta wait like four months for them to make that move so all you can really do in the meantime is outbound prospect like crazy like double the amount of doors, doors you're knocking double the amount of cold calls you're making 
do everything like 2x, 2x the amount of open houses you're doing, you will find something. You will find someone that needs to do something soon. But if you don't, don't be discouraged because you're probably finding a lot of people that want to do something in the future. And you can't think so short-sighted because real estate is just naturally a long-term game where the average person you meet are just not gonna do anything soon. What I recommend my agents to do who are like, let's just say they're circle prospecting. What I recommend you doing is go through your entire CRM and make a sorted spreadsheet on everyone that wants to make a move next year like springtime next year. Put in their names, put in their address, put in what the Zestimate is, and calculate 3% of that as the listing commission, and add up the sum, uh, add up the total of all of the commissions of the leads that you've been generating that are saying, I wanna wait till springtime. And you might be surprised, it might be, a giant number. Now, let's be realistic with that number. Let's just say half of them don't end up doing anything. Get realistic with those numbers, figure out what that realistic number is to you. And let's just say, dude, let's just say five of them sold. What's your average commission rate for your uh, uh, for your area? $10,000, $15,000, $20,000? Multiply that five by the, by the amount of transactions you think you're gonna do out of all those. And just keep in mind, the money is happening soon. Not right now, but eventually it's coming. Don't get discouraged. Don't let your foot off the gas pedal. Keep on going. Like everything you do in Q3 and 4, it's going to be realized and like completed Q1 and 2 of next year. So keep on going. Keep on lead generating. You have to. You have to keep lead generating. If you're having trouble with consistency and like the skill of converting, join the academy. It's Saturday and I saw two guys cold calling in the cold call room and four of the guys are gonna like role play later today at 6 p.m. I love the accountability here. It keeps me accountable. It keeps the agents accountable. And you also learn how to like convert better. So join the academy. I just rebuilt the entire academy on WAP. So it's got like new and improved information as well. But right now what I'm headed to do is I'm going to go refill my CO2 tank because uh, I make sparkling, <laughs> I make my own sparkling water at home and I ran out of uh, CO2. So I'm going to go get that refilled and go hit the gym. I went to a welding supply store for, uh... oh, look at that. I went to a welding supply store to get my uh, new tank of CO2 and I'm... It's funny because everyone that goes in there is like this super rugged, <laughs> super rugged, large dude welding for a living. And I'm like, no, nah, guys, I'm not, I'm not a welder. I'm a pussy. I'm, I'm drinking sparkling water. <laughs> Bruh. All right, now I'm going to go to the gym. I haven't been going to the gym at all. Lately, I haven't been going to the gym because I feel like there's no point. Because, you know, for me, and I, I'm, I'm a real one, all right? I'm always going to keep it 100 with you guys. Um, I don't ever go out. I don't do things. I've been like, all I've been doing recently was just working. It's been like this for a long time now. Like I really just, I hang out with like a core, like three people and I barely even hang out with them. Like my social life is non-existent. I woke, I wake up at eight, I get on Discord. So, so I'm like, I'm constantly interacting with people all day. I'm constantly interacting with my agents, my students. I'm constantly on the phone with like leads or on a sales call or whatever. Like I'm constantly interacting with people, but in terms of a social life, I have just absolutely zero of that because you know, by the time I wrap up work around 8, 9 p.m., um, I'll still, like, make a video or, like, work on something until I go to bed. And I have, like, no way of meeting people. I've got no way of meeting people. And it's really hard to, like, it's hard to even have personal DMs because I have someone on my Instagram account um, sending out messages. And so 
like I can't it's a little difficult for me to like slide into anyone's DMs because then my guy will see all of them and that's a little embarrassing I barely leave the house and because of this lifestyle I've been living I've stopped taking care of myself like gym wise because I'm like what's the point I'm not going to like I, I'm not I don't see myself seeing anyone anytime soon because of the way I'm currently living life like I don't go out I don't I don't meet new people I hate going to bars I hate going to clubs even more I don't drink I don't I don't go to parties I don't do anything except work and because I've been living this kind of lifestyle I think unconsciously in my head I'm going well, what's the point of looking good physically if I'm not going to find anyone? Especially because I live in Seattle and the type of girl I'm looking for is probably not here. Just statistically. I'm sure there's someone in Seattle that I could date and like I can see myself having kids with, but that's such a small pool of people that I just feel so like it's unlikely that I'm gonna find someone here especially from like going out to a bar or a party I don't have a desire to do any of that I think the place where I could find a wife is a church I love I, I, lo I love my church but like there are no girls that I would like to date to marry there so I'm in this like weird predicament where I f almost feel like it's hopeless I feel like I'm not gonna find anyone here. Number one, because I live in Seattle, but number two, because of the way I live, like I never go out, I never do anything. So because those are my foundational beliefs about how my life is gonna go, I just have no desire or motivation to go to the gym. But today, I, all I have is time, so... And also, like, I can't... I can't be thinking that. I can't be attracting that. I can't be, I can't let myself go because I don't think the kind of girl I want is here. You know what, like who knows what's gonna happen and I can't be looking like pudding. I can't be looking like a pile of yogurt uh, if I do happen to run across that girl. I wanna be like, <laughs> I wanna be jacked. I wanna, I wanna look good. I wanna be able to flex my back and hear an audible gasp from my from my future girl and I'm not gonna that's not gonna happen if I let myself go I don't know if anyone can relate to me am I like alone as an incel in this or um, can anyone relate here guys where do I even find a girl I'm, I'm looking for someone driven motivated that uh, still upholds traditional values where do I find a chick like that probably at a, a nice gym you know maybe I need to um, join like an expensive gym because any chick that's there is either has a rich boyfriend, a rich father, or she's actually doing something in life where she can afford a gym like that. And if she's at a gym, she's taking care of herself, she, you know, that's a good sign. So a gym is one place. A church is also a place. Maybe I need to go to a different church. Where else? Arizona. I just need to move states and just <laughs> hang out in a new state to find the chick I'm looking for. Bro, it's tough. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's slim pickings out there. Just wrapped up my workout. The gym looks really nice. They did a whole remodel, so. Um, my membership runs out in 20 days. I'll definitely be re-upping. Oh my. I don't know when the novelty is gonna run out, but it looks so good. I looked at the uh, I looked at the G82. I looked at the M4 Comp. I looked at the C63 AMG. Dude, I'm looking for a car that lasts forever. I I, I see myself having like several cars in my garage. Um, I, I see myself like having exotics, and I, I need a beater, like a daily beater that I don't I don't care about. But I want that daily beater number one to last forever, and number two to be relatively nice and if this if this launch edition 500 f sport is my daily beater um i think that's fantastic also you know if anything happens to my parents 
um, I can give them this car out of my uh, garage. I, I just don't think the BMW or Mercedes is gonna last the length of time that I want my daily beater to last. So I was thinking about this in the gym and I wanna tell you guys how to overcome someone when they say, I'm gonna list or I'm gonna do something in the springtime or I'm gonna do something after the holidays. The holiday objection or the springtime objection, how do you get over that? Well, you need to use urgency. Basically, people don't act on what they can gain. People will act out of scarcity and fear of what they could lose. So you need to instill that kind of urgency to get them to reframe the way they're currently thinking in order to meet with you. So urgency sounds like this. Yeah, Aaron, we're gonna wait till the springtime to, to list our home. We'll make some decisions around then. Okay, Bob, it sounds like you've definitely decided you wanna make this move. It's just a matter of timing. What's got you waiting till the springtime? So I, I, I gave a statement of acknowledgement and question. Statement of acknowledgement is, okay, it sounds like you're definitely moving, you're just waiting. Then the next question, which is digging into what is the intention of waiting till spring? And they're gonna say something like, well, we want the market to get hotter. We think interest rates are gonna go down. Okay, Bob, so it sounds like you're just waiting for this to make financial sense for you get to get the most amount of money out of the sale of your home, right? Right, all right, that was a statement of acknowledgement where I acknowledge what their plan was. But I've shifted the conversation away from waiting till springtime to, oh, you're just trying to net top dollar for your property, right? Now the topic of the conversation has changed. Now I'm gonna try to leverage Bob for um, getting top dollar, not waiting till springtime. Now in order to do that, I need to take away what his desired reality and outcome is. So Bob, you know what? What if something happens to the market where the market goes down and in the springtime you're forced to take less than what you could get for it now? How would that affect your retirement, Bob? Well, that wouldn't be good. Right, and Bob, I know the last thing you'd want is to have to wait four to six months and accidentally take $30,000, $40,000 less than what you could get now. Because I know your whole goal here is to net top dollar, right? Right. So Bob, before we make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly what the market's doing now. It might shock you. We'll take a look at what the market could be doing six months from now. And depending on whatever makes the most financial sense for you and your retirement, you can make that decision from there. I've got time today at four or six, what works best for you? So to break that down, I've changed the way he's thinking about uh, what could be happening in the future. And to basically hedge his bets, it's like, hey, we can meet up just to see what the market is doing now, what you could get for it now. And then we can kind of guesstimate what's gonna happen in like springtime. And you make the decision based on whatever makes financial sense between the two options. So that's how you instill urgency. In fact, I've gotten several listings from doing that. My favorite scenario that I got out of that was like, some guy was waiting a year to retire to the Philippines and he was waiting till next summer where interest rates might be lower to get top dollar. And I was like, well, dude, what if it doesn't work out the way you plan? What if you have to end up taking less for the compared to what you could get for it now. And he's like, oh, you, I think you're maybe, you know, you have some good points. So we met up, we listed his house in two days and it sold like 17 days later for cash. And it was my quickest sale I've ever had. And in fact, next, the year after that, um, he, it, the, the market did end up going down. So he actually ended up netting more money than he could than he would have if he waited. I don't want this video to be too long, but let me know what you guys think of this video format. I've wanted to try vlog style for a while now, but I didn't think my life was like exciting enough to do it. So let me know what you think in the comments below, please. Like, let me know if you want this.